Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Metali Jha, and I work on machine learning projects in a company called Crossover. So uh, I'm sorry for all the experts here, because my talk is geared more towards uh, the beginners of uh, learning to rank. That is, the developers who have already built an, uh, a search engine application, but are yet to leverage the machine learning capabilities for ranking. Now, this is just a very high-level introduction on how to use learning to rank, and is not intended for the audience uh, who has leveraged the machine learning capabilities. So what is learning to rank? Now, learning to rank is a class of machine learning algorithms that outputs models that are used for ranking the query search results uh, based on optimization of feature values. Now, generally, what happens is that when a developer starts building a search engine application, he normally tunes the ranking parameters in a way so as to uh, achieve maximum, uh, achieve as relevant uh, results as possible. However, with the machine learning capabilities, uh, capturing user behavior and logging, uh, so uh, better and more optimal results can be achieved uh, without even having to have the domain expertise by training the machine learned model and using this trained model for ranking. So uh, now I would walk you through uh, the demos uh, of uh, the three search engines, starting off alphabetically uh, from Elasticsearch. So the LTR plugin for Elasticsearch comes as a third-party plugin. Oops. What happened? OK, it comes as a third-party plugin, uh, which is provided by Open Source Connections. Uh, uh, this was uh, developed by Doug Turnbull. So if you have any queries, you can always reach out to him. He must be here somewhere. Then the basic concepts here are feature store. Now, what is a feature store? A feature store is actually a place where different sets of feature sets get stored. Say, for example, a team identifies, uh, defines a set of feature sets which get stored in a feature store. And at the same time, a different team defines yet another set of feature sets, which goes and sits in the same feature store at the same time, living side by side, parallelly. So uh, during training, uh, we need to uh, select one of the feature stores from here, uh, which goes ahead to train a model. The next concept is, to, is a model store. This is similar to a feature store, but here, the algorithm, which has, uh, so, uh, the algorithm must have generated a model which uh, needs to be uploaded into a model store uh, onto the search engine. Now, uh, while re-ranking the query results, uh, we need to select one of the, model, one of the models from this uh, model store, and uh, which uh, actually helps in, uh, which then goes uh, further to re-rank the uh, feature value scores. The third concept is query rescoring. Now, what happens is that a search engine originally re-ranks its uh, query results on the basis of uh, uh, what is called as native ranking or native scoring. But in order to achieve more optimal uh, results, uh, there's a concept of uh, query rescoring, which then re-ranks, which is also called as second phase ranking, which re-ranks the uh, feature value sets in order to achieve better results. So this is the place where query rescoring comes into picture. Then Elastic LTR supports libraries like RankLib and XGBoost. And RankLib has got uh, a set of algorithms like uh, it supports uh, mm, linear regression, logistic regression, then uh, decision tree-based models, then lambda mat, et cetera. So for the purpose of this demo, I have used the movies database TMDB dataset. Uh, which comes as a toy example with the learning to rank Elasticsearch demo. It consists of uh, movies. Uh, for further reference, you can go to this uh, link and documentation. So I now walk you through the demo. Elasticsearch is running. Just OK. So the first script is the Python script for utils, which is actually accessing which is used for accessing the Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, it, can, it contains parameters like Elasticsearch host, authentication, password, host name, and the port. So we run this script. The next script is 
the Python script for prepare, which actually downloads the TMDB data set and the ranklib.jar file. So the interest of time and uh, the fact that internet usually doesn't work during demos, I'm not going to run this file. We move on to the third step. So the very first step after starting up Elasticsearch in LTR demo is to index this TMDB data set. So we run this script, and we see here that Elasticsearch client gets initialized and reads the TMDB data set, which then gets indexed onto Elasticsearch. Uh, since this uh, data set contains a lot of uh, records, uh, almost about 27,000 movies, I'm not going to wait for the indexing to complete. Rather, move on to the next step, which is to train a model. So training a model involves some helper methods like uh, judgments.py, collectfeatures.py, and loadfeatures.py. So we also see here that a path gets created where features are stored in order to be used for our models. And we go back and see if the indexing has been completed or not. OK, so indexing has been completed. And we see that Poison is the last movie to be indexed, which is also the last thing to have in life if you ever choose to have it. So yes, we run the script and then move on to the Python script for train. So this is a very important step because this involves uh, training the model. This starts off by connecting to Elasticsearch. And the very first step is to create an uh, initial default feature store. For the purpose of this demo, we have identified certain features, like title and overview. We see here that these features are uh, identified by ordinals. So uh, the main idea here is that the user-defined keywords should match the title for a particular query, which then becomes the feature score for this feature title. Similarly, the overview match for this query becomes the feature score for the feature overview. Now, a feature in Elasticsearch is an Elasticsearch query. And it can be anything like, say, uh, how old a movie is or anything that correlates to the user's sense of relevance. And feature scores that are yielded here are then used for training and evaluating the model. So we define a feature store here. And then uh, th this is an empty feature store, obviously. And then the second step is to load these feature scores back into Elasticsearch. Then comes the concept of judgment list. So I show you what a judgments file looks like. OK, so this is a three-tuple judgment list, which actually tells us how relevant a document is with respect to a search query. It consists of grades, query ID, and the query itself. So we see here that the movie Rambo for query ID 1, which is Rambo, receives a grade of 4, which means that the user found this movie to be extremely relevant for query Rambo. Similarly, the movie First Daughter receives a grade of 0 for the query Rambo again, which means that the user found the First Daughter movie to be not to be relevant at all for the query Rambo, and henceforth. So uh, we use this judgment, sample judgments.txt file. Now, in order for a Ranklib model to work, it needs this judgment file along with the two more columns, which have the feature score values, uh, which are extracted from the Elasticsearch. So we run this. And we see here that uh, the Ranklib, uh, this training is happening for each of these 10 models. And train model uh, simply uses the sample uh, judgments with features file. And uh, the Ranklib then generates a model. And save model, so the model generated from Ranklib is then upload it into the model store of Elasticsearch. We run this and see that each of the 10 models are getting trained. So 
while this takes some time, we move on to the next script, which, which is actually querying, uh, querying the results and re-ranking them on the basis of this trained model. So we see that this is a simple Elasticsearch query across the two fields, title and overview. And this is an important step here, which where LTR plugin comes into picture. So this is actually rescoring or re-ranking or the second phase of ranking of the query results based on the parameters, keywords, and model. We see if all the models have been trained. And yes, all the 10 models have been trained. We quickly see what one of the model files look like. OK, so this is for uh, Lambda Mart model. And uh, we, this is in XML format. We see that the feature score value for feature 1, which is title, is 10.36 something. And for feature 2, which was overview, the feature score value is 11.95. OK, so we run the Python script for search.py. And then we run the final query, which is searching for a Rambo query in the Lambda Mart model. And we see the order of the movies. So this is the order in which the uh, feature values of the mov movies have been re-ranked uh, of what the model thought should have been the best order. So this pretty much covers the demo for Elasticsearch. Then we move on to the learning to rank for Solar. So the LTR uh, plugin for Solar uh, comes out of the box as a contrib module, which was initially provided by Bloomberg. The basic concepts remain the same, feature store, model store, and query re-ranking. And it supports libraries like libsvm, liblinear, ranklib partial, because it um, supports only few algorithms, like uh, Lambda Mart being one of them, and Deep Learning 4J, the support of which is going to come. So uh, the LTR plugin for Solar Demo uh, comes with tech products, uh, which you can find here. You can go through this documentation. But for the purpose of Apple to Apple comparison, I have used the same DMDB data set, which I used for Elasticsearch. So we go to Insomnia REST client. And the very first step is to create collection with shard1, and the name of the collection is tmdb. OK. Then we index all the data onto solar. This, again, is going to take a while, because it contains about 27,000 movies. So while the indexing is happening, uh, I'll walk you through the next set of steps, which involves enabling the LTR pl plugin. So there are three main components for enabling the LTR plugin. One is to add the LTR query parser. The second is to add feature cache. Feature cache is on top of the feature store, uh, which is used for uh, caching features. And the third step is to add LTR transformer. Now we see whether all the documents have been indexed. OK. So all the documents have been indexed here. Then. We add the LTR query parser, add the feature cache. We can also set the size for this feature value cache. And add the LTR transformer. Now we add the features here. So just like a feature in Elasticsearch is an Elasticsearch query, feature in Solar is a Solar query. So now we hit the query to extract features, which is going to extract all the feature score values from Solar. OK, so we see that the value for the title feature is 12 point something and 10 point something for overview feature, which is almost similar to what we saw in case of Elasticsearch. Since the feature value sco scores are similar, the models will also be similar. Hence, I'm not going to retrain the model, rather use the same model, which was used in case of Elasticsearch. And I add the model here. OK, 
this takes about 23 seconds. So we can add uh, these feature value scores. Uh, we can plug into the judgment list and hand it over to RankLib to train and rank the model. OK, and then we run the final LTR query for this trained model. So the re-ranking score, so uh, it uses the re-ranking parameter with the default LTR model, and it re-ranks the top n documents, which is 300 in this case, the re-ranks the query results. And we see that uh, the order is the same as what we saw in case of Elasticsearch. So this completes the demo for Solar LTR. And then we move on to Vespa. So, uh, Vespa offers the first-class support for LTR. Basic concepts include tensors. So like we saw that in Elasticsearch or uh, Solar, the feature value scores are scalar quantities. In case of Vespa, it can be uh, multidimensional quantities as well, which are called tensors. So tensors can be anything ranging from uh, scalars to matrices to higher dimensional values. And then models, of course, and the first and second phase ranking expressions. So second phase ranking is required on top of the native ranking to achieve better results. Then Vespa uh, supports TensorFlow library. OK, so uh, we use real world data here from one of the Kaggle competitions, uh, which uh, handles the blog posts. Uh, about 1.1 million blog posts are there and uh, captures users' uh, preferences uh, for liking those blog posts. You can always uh, go to this documentation for further information. So for the uh, purpose of saving time and that the fact that I've got a very humble laptop and the data set was huge, I have pre-recorded the demos. I'm going to run through them. OK, so I start off by, by starting Vespa through a Docker command, which assigns 10 gigabytes of memory because the application is huge. So Vespa is al was already running in the background, so I did not have to start it. And then ensuring that Vespa has started properly, the application status is 200, which is good. And then the third step is to deploy the sample application. Now, what is a sample application? It consists of models, query profiles, search definitions, and a definition of which hosts the application will run on. Search definitions are the schema of the collections. Uh, the collections here are blog posts and users. Now, a document of type blog post has the following fields, date in the GMT format, language, title, author, etc. Apart from this schema, it also includes the ranking profiles, first phase ranking and the second phase ranking. OK, then we see whether the sample application has been deployed or not. So in other words, whether the collections have been created. something. OK. OK, then the next step is to split the data set in training and test data sets. The test data sets comprises of uh, about 25% split, whereas train data set uh, comprises 75% of the split. I have pre-computed the data in the training and test data sets, and also pre-generated the tensors for training. So I did not have to run this again. Then the next step is to train a model using TensorFlow library. So training a model uh, took about uh, 20 hours of runtime. So I had to pre-train this model. And here we see the output of this trained model. So the sample application uh, comes shipped with this pre-trained model, so we don't even have to deploy it again. 
Then the next step is to index the blog posts and user data into Vespa using this big script. OK, so once the data has been indexed and the model has been deployed, we now see them in action. So first, we run a query search for Pegasus. We see here that the Vespa query format is very similar to SQL form SQL uh, and is called YQL. We run this query and see the titles, author interview, day 102, etc. Now we run the same query, but with the point of view of a logged in user for user ID this. And see that the titles are different. I do believe, or whatever. Because these, these results are more geared towards users' interests, hence we see a difference here. So this pretty much covers the Vespa demo for LTR. A quick example that comes to my mind, uh, which, relates, which is in relation to the Vespa demo, is uh, say, for example, a user hits a query uh, for Munich. Uh, and the search engine comes up with results uh, uh, relating, uh, pertaining to Munich's weather or the buildings or whatever. But say if, the, if that user wants to see, uh, is more interested in uh, sports and specifically football, then uh, with the help of machine learning capabilities, the search engine uh, should show the results, uh, say, um, some, some uh, football team in Munich. So. This is pretty much it, yeah. All right, let's thank the speaker. Thank you. I suggest you take the questions offline. Uh, yeah. We now conclude this first session of today here in the Kessel House and break for lunch. Lunch break is about an hour. And taken, lunch is taken just next doors in the Palais. We will assemble here at two. Uh, enjoy your lunch and see you later. Thank you. Thank you.